so today we're having a conversation with our place, the Our Place Society. Anyone who's driven down Pandora knows Our Place. It's a beautiful building. There is so much that goes on there. And uh, have here with us today uh, is the uh, CEO, uh, the Chief Executive Officer, Julian Daly. Julian, thanks for joining us. Hi, welcome. Thank you. Yes, yes, Julian. So now um, you are newer to town. Uh, you stepped in in the position uh, in about, actually during COVID time, right? Yeah, three months ago. Okay. I'm one of those people that came from across Canada, came yeah. from Edmonton, Alberta. Well, you're not, uh, you, don't exactly, you don't exactly have the Edmonton accent there. No, I came uh, by Edmonton. I'm from Ireland originally, but I got an English accent. Uh, yes. so I went to boarding school in England for 10 years, lived in England a lot. So, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, I'm arrived in Victoria from, from UK, Edmonton uh, via Edmonton. Great. Okay, so let's start with what is our place and what is ex exactly that our place does in the community? Yeah, our place, you know, if you, the people who do pass it on Pandora will see our, our name, but also underneath it, they hopefully will see the words hope and belonging. And I think that's essentially what we're about. We're a place that tries to give people hope who have lost hope and people a sense of belonging who have no sense of belonging. So it's a place that folk can come and get meals, uh, get support with employment, uh, get health services, get spiritual care, uh, can have uh, health care as well, and can get access to computers and, and, and other services so that they can begin to uh, have a healthier life and to, to, to make the changes they want to and talk to people and counseling too if they, if they need that. So it's a place that, you know, we call the people who come here family members and we do that for you know, a reason because it is a family feeling here. It is a real sense of community. So it's a place where folk can come and have a sense of belonging, but also through the services and the connection with others and with the staff here, hopefully get a sense of hope too and, uh, and can move on in their lives. And we also provide housing as well, uh, transitional housing, but uh, also more permanent housing and shelter spaces on other sites. Because we actually have nine sites, even though the Pandora site is, is known the best. But yeah, hope and belonging is really what we're about. Mm -hmm. you, you know, I think, and again, I think it's really important that people uh, know exactly what our place does. Uh, again, there are so many residents around the neighborhood there. Yeah. I mean, uh, Victoria has grown uh, in a short amount of time. We've added a, a, a few thousand residential units yeah. in the downtown core that were not there 15 years ago. And, you know, people often wonder, they're like, well, what's going on? Because there's all this, there's so much stuff going on down there. Uh, you know, I've heard people uh, mistakenly uh, think that it's like a soup kitchen or something like that. It is so much more, right? Uh, I, of course, I've been in the building many times before. I want to parse down kind of what you just mentioned a moment ago. So the first one is meals. You've got a beautiful dining area. Um, how many meals do you serve a day? Yeah, we serve nearly a quarter of a million meals a year. Yeah. And uh, we, it is a pre-COVID, we were doing about 1,500 uh, meals a day. Uh, it's, it's somewhat down now to about a thousand or so, but you know, expect that to go up again in the winter. Uh, we serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Uh, it's, you know, it's the main meal service in in Victoria for people who are homeless, but also people who are living in poverty or struggling, because not all the people that come to our place are homeless. Many are, but many are also just folk that are going through some tough times and struggling to make ends meet, and it's a place for them to, to help get by. Well, I, I have to say, and I, I, I want to mention the story really quick. A number of years ago, um, I hired a fellow to clean my windows because, you know, you, you get the flyers at your home and somebody, you know, offering to clean windows. And at the time, I needed to have windows clean. This is a long time ago now. And I will never forget, nice fellow. He did a great job. Um, I was at our place at a function or doing something, and he was waiting in line. And I'm like, my goodness, it's not just the street population. Yeah. It's It's like I said in my opening there. It is people that, that, that we see out there in our daily lives but don't realize that, that uh, they need the help, right? 
and I think we're going to see even more of that, Tony. You know, with the when the government benefits come to an end, and uh, with unfortunately more and more people losing their jobs in Victoria due to the due, due to the reduction of tourists in our city, I think we're going to see you know a number of people who are just making it by now who won't make it by, and who may indeed become homeless, uh, and certainly will need our meal services and other services. In fact, we're already seeing some of those people coming in. Who are saying to my colleagues that they never they never thought they'd end up in a place like our place they never thought they'd need those services mm -hmm. i think there are a number of people in victoria right now who are very vulnerable just on the edge and i'm really worried about the fact that they may just go over that edge into homelessness or you know or a degree of poverty they've never experienced before because that, that's always been a discussion it's 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 how people are often a paycheck away from yep complete crisis right yeah and this is an expensive city i've moved here from edmonton my rent gone up about 80 percent yes from edmonton so it's really hard to make ends meet here between rent and groceries and other costs so yeah I, well, i'm really worried about that yeah and and you know with that th this is another example sometimes of you know we're, we're uh, victoria is a victim of its own success because as much as as much as it's a beautiful town, beautiful attributes, air, you know, uh, lifestyle, quality, and everything drives people here. It's market driven too, which means that things are expensive. Yeah, and a lot of the, you know, quite a number of the people who are camping currently in our parks, and I know that is a real concern for for people in this city, and uh, and also has created a lot of fear and anxiety for folk as well. But you know many of the people are there because simply because they can't afford housing housing and they they can't they don't have access to affordable housing and they've been no longer able to pay their rent so you know that is a real problem in our city and really driving homelessness is the lack of affordable housing and access to it as well as as we know you know people having mental health and addiction challenges as well mm -hmm. uh you know that's another major driver but we should never forget the 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 role that the lack of housing uh, plays in homelessness in our city. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, um, we need to take a break in just a moment here, but I want to remind people, uh, the Art Place Society is on Pandora. The address again, Julian? 919 Pandora Avenue. 919 Pandora. Uh, and please visit the website, um, the Art Place website, because you can donate, you can support the cause that uh, Art Place has had for many years here. Uh, and I, if you don't already know, and I'm sure many of our listeners are already supporters uh, of our place, uh, but anyone who isn't, please uh, uh, learn more about our place. Uh, we'll, we'll be talking more about the other things that our place does uh, in our community, along with talking about uh, some fun fundraising stuff that has happened recently uh, here right now with the CEO, uh, Julian uh, Daly. Uh, Julian, again, thanks very much for coming and joining us today. Thank you for having me, Tony. Yeah, now don't go anywhere because like I said, uh, we're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, we'll be picking up the conversation with our place back in just a moment. Thanks for coming back. You're listening to The Whole Home Show, and I'm Tony Joe. Our show comes to you every week with the support of our show partners, Denise Webster, mortgage broker with Dominion Lending Center's Modern Mortgage Group, J.P. Sellers, insurance advisor at Westland Insurance, the Sitka Law Group for your real estate, wills and estates, corporate and personal injury needs, and... Shoreline Inspections with Reese Jacob and Monica Gass. If you need help or direction in your real estate transaction, give any of the Whole Home Show team members a call. They would love to hear from you. And as a reminder, if you would like to get in touch with them, just go to cfax1070.com, look under Shows, and there you'll find us, the Whole Home Show with me, Tony Joe. All of our contact information is there. Be happy to chat with you uh, or just reach out to me directly. I would um, be pleased to connect with you. Uh, for our podcast listeners, just as a reminder, we podcast all of our episodes. If you're an iTunes listener or uh, Google Play, uh, just download all 178 episodes we've done now over the course of four years. So much great information. Uh, you can, um, at any point in time you are at in your real estate transaction or just knowing about the community, uh, you can just do a search and find all of the great content that we have there. We're having a conversation today uh, about something that's very important in our city, in our community. Uh, we are acknowledged to be an expensive town. Victoria, if you didn't know, is the third most expensive real estate in Canada. Some people would be surprised at that. Uh, it is Vancouver, Toronto, 
Victoria. And the most surprising thing when you think about it is we're a small town. We have a population of 400,000 versus Toronto's six and a half million and Vancouver's three, almost three million. Uh, and yet we're so expensive. Uh, why are we? It's because people want to be here. This is exactly what Julian and I were talking about a couple of months ago. But it is a double-edged sword, too, because an expensive place to live, live means that there's other people on the other side of the spectrum as well. And we're talking today with our place, learning more about the great work that they do, because I think one of the things we all as a community really want is we want a healthy community. We want everyone to be safe and comfortable and happy. Uh, and, you know, that's one of the things that uh, our place does. Uh, Julian, I, and welcome back, by the way. Um, I forgot to ask, so what specifically is the mandate of our place? Like, uh, we, talked, we, just, we talked about the site. We talked about some of the things you do. Um, what's the mandate? Mandate is to provide a place of hope and belonging and to work with folk uh, with unconditional love and in a non-judgmental way mm -hmm. and to support folk to have healthier lives and to be housed and to move out of poverty. Yeah, it, it's fantastic. Um, uh, so as a reminder to uh, the listeners, my background, one of the reasons why I, I do know and understand some of these things, I'm a realtor, so I sell homes. I help people buy and sell homes and people have often asked, how come, wh why do you know about this stuff? It's because after my term as the president of the Victoria Real Estate Board in 2008, I had the privilege of being the co-chair of the Greater Victoria Coalition and Homelessness. Uh, I was the successor to Ted Hughes, who was a, an amazing individual who sadly passed away uh, recently um, and they started this coalition to try to end homelessness and by the way our our Julian you, you may know this but our mandate at the time when the coalition was created in 2009 or sorry two, it, it was earlier than that actually um, the mandate was to end homelessness in Victoria mm -hmm. by 2018 and here we are now so uh, you know people might wonder what happened I, I mean so much effort has gone into this. Why, why are we seeing things uh, remain so difficult for people on the streets right now? I think we should also look at the positives that there are now hundreds, if not thousands of people who are currently housed in uh, Victoria as a result of the work that you, Tony and others have done. Um, but there are more people who have come into homelessness. So it's not like, it's not all just a bleak story of nothing having changed, you know, and often, you know, people drive past uh, our place on Pandora and think, there's always people hanging out there. Does nothing ever, does, does anything ever change? Well, the reality is that the people hanging out there are probably not the same people who are hanging out there a few years ago because many of them have moved on and have found housing. Um, you know, the 400, for you know 400 or so people have been housed just since covid and the hundreds of people who were camping on pandora are now housed uh, in hotels it's transitional housing but they have a home so progress has been made but as those folk get housed as other people fall into homelessness so yes it is a it is an ongoing challenge but homelessness has been ended for many people yeah oh th that's a fantastic point thanks for bringing that up I mean, when I was involved, I saw hundreds of people getting housed. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, there's, because the other thing too, is there's this perception that people come to Victoria to live on the streets. Yeah, and I don't, yeah, I, I really would challenge that. You know, the, the research is that shows really clearly that uh, only 12% of people uh, have been in Vic who are homeless have been in Victoria for a year or less. And that the vast majority actually have been homeless on the streets of Victoria for five years or more. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, I undoubtedly, some people do move here because of the climate and they're attracted by it. But I think most people don't. Uh, you know, I worked in a similar field in Edmonton, Tony. And I remember when, it, you know, sometimes I'd go out when it was minus 20, minus 30 outside our building. And I'd say to the guy, I'd say, why don't you go to Victoria? It's like, it's warmer <laughs> there, you know, kind of half joking. Yeah. And you know what? Every single time I said that, they always said, nope, I know it's warmer there and it's really cold here right now, but my family and my friends are here. Yeah. You know, homeless people stay where they are 
for the same reasons that non-homeless people do, because of connections and networks and family and friends. So uh, I don't think we have the kind of hordes moving here that people think, yeah, sure, some, but not not uh, as many as people might uh, perceive. Well, I agree with this too, because you know the, we've, uh, the city has done studies over the years. Yeah. And, and this is exactly what, what has been discovered. So this is one of those myths that people have that has proven time and time again. To, to when I lived in Edmonton, there was the same myth, funnily enough. People yeah. would say that, oh, people are coming to Edmonton because we have so many services. They're coming from all across Canada. And they yeah. didn't. Yeah. So I, I think that the cities get this sort of urban myth develops often. Interesting. Sure. For sure. Well, listen, I'd like to introduce uh, now uh, one of our other guests, uh, also from our place, and that is uh, Stephen Seltzer. Stephen, thanks for uh, joining us today. Hi, Tony. Thanks so much for having us. Well, Stephen, explain your role at, uh, at our place. Um, I manage fundraising events. Uh, I also manage, uh, well, I, I work with businesses uh, and, and basically to help find revenue for our place that we can provide all the services that this community needs. And that's one of the things that I wanted to bring up today too is how our place is funded, because all of the all of the programs and all the things that our place has, uh, not just at the Pandora site, because there's a number of sites. Stephen, right now you are at the Therapeutic Recovery Center um, uh, out in View Royal right now. I can see you, right? Yeah. Um, so there are so many programs, but they need to be funded, right? They do. Um, housing, we're, we're supported heavily by uh, BC Housing, but uh, all of our other programs, whether it's uh, serving meals, uh, whether it's providing uh, outreach uh, for, for the people we serve, uh, everything that we do, we, we rely on, on our community to, to provide the funding. And um, we do have an amazing uh, donor base who understand the work that we do is vital and, and basically understand what Victoria would be like without our place. Um, it, it, without our place, where would uh, um, uh, people be going for shelter? Where would people be going uh, for, for medical aid? Because we do have paramedic outreach workers. We, we do, um, if you look at it, we do save money uh, in our community because we're able to treat people at our place. Um, we're, we're a vital resource and um, we're gonna be even more vital to a lot more people because I know Julian mentioned, um, there's more people we're seeing because of uh, uh, COVID that uh, never would have expected to be uh, using our services, but we want people out there to know that um, our services are available to all of Greater Victoria. So important. The, the economic impact is actually a huge one, and that's one. We're going to take a break in just a moment here, but we're going to start talking about that after our last segment here. Something that I do remember, which I know is a fact, is the cost to actually um, take care of somebody who's living hard in the streets, uh, going in and out of the prison system, uh, uh, going into the hospital system, uh, is much more expensive than actually providing housing and the programs that uh, organizations like Our Place uh, uh, provide on a regular basis. In fact, that the, the numbers are staggering, and, and perhaps we can talk about that uh, after a break. So we're talking today uh, from Our Place, the CEO, uh, Julian Daly, and also uh, Stephen Seltzer, uh, who's responsible, a really important job of, of fundraising. Uh, we're going to take a, our last break for the day here, back in just a moment. Hi there, everyone. Thanks for coming back. You're listening to The Whole Home Show, and I'm Tony Joe. We're having a conversation today about all the great work that our place does in the community. There are a number of amazing organizations in Greater Victoria that serve the needs of those who need the help, that need uh, assistance uh, either in housing or uh, finding work or health uh, issues or things like that. Uh, we have with us uh, the CEO, uh, Julian Daly. Again, Julian, thanks very much for coming. Thank you for having us. Yeah, and also Stephen Seltzer. Stephen uh, takes care of fundraising uh, at our place. Uh, Julian, stepping back uh, at, at the uh, earlier part of our show, we were talking about our place on Pandora, which is one of several sites that our place has. Um, and we talked about meals. Uh, one of the fun things that the real estate community does in uh, October's typically is we volunteer. So we give donations and a, a number of our groups actually go and serve breakfast. Um, I, I'm sure things are a little different right now under COVID, but you know, normally this is, this is what we would do. Um, 
of course, we would still donate. Yeah. That, that is still important. Uh, and then we have other uh, community icons like uh, Gordy Dodd, who every year has his big Thanksgiving uh, dinner. He's done that for years, and he has, uh, you know, uh, uh, fed so many, so many great things that happen. But it's not just uh, meals. So there are several floors to the building. Um, you mentioned um, uh, uh, access to computers and employment and stuff. H how does that help people that um, uh, that need to move forward in life? Uh, having access to, to these services, for instance. Yeah, just before I, I talk about that, I did want to recognize the, the generosity of the real estate community and realtors who repeatedly every year come back in large numbers to do meals uh, and serve meals and uh, pay for meals for uh, our family members and just really want to acknowledge that and thank you for your generosity because you know, often I think people wouldn't kind of think of realtors and our place as having an awful lot in common, but I think we, we are so similar because you guys are about trying to find people homes, and so are we, and about making people feel belonging and at home. And I think actually our missions and our mandates are, are remarkably similar, but I just wanted to acknowledge that and, and thank you guys for that. And Stephen will say a bit in a minute about the renewed uh, meal program, but Employment is really important. I think there's an, another myth about homeless people uh, or people who are really struggling that they, they're kind of lazy and don't really want to work and just want to live off government benefits. Uh, and, th and that's simply not the case. The vast majority of homeless people I've ever worked with would love to work and it's, it's a struggle. Sometimes they are prevented because of mental health and addiction challenges. Uh, and that's why we work with them to help them overcome that so they can actually get back to work. But some, uh, many actually can work, uh, even if it's in a kind of a limited schedule. So that's one of the reasons why we have a, an employment program, is to support the family members here uh, to get resumes together and to get practice with interviews and to, to, to get the tickets they need to work and to access and help them find the jobs that they want. We're also looking at establishing some social enterprises here as well, which is a really great way of uh, putting money in family members, our, the people we serve as pockets, but also helping them to work in a way that's more manageable for some. Not all can work a full week. So, yeah, employment is a really important part of, of, of changing your life and getting to a better place. Because this is the thing. I mean, one of the focuses here is moving people onward. Yeah. Not just not just sustaining them in a in a situation that they may be in right now, but helping them move uh, to where they want to be. Right? Absolutely, that's core to our work. And I often think folk look at a place like uh, our place from outside and see all the folk hanging out. And they think, oh, nothing ever changes. Those guys are not invested in moving those guys on in any way or helping them to improve their lives. But that's absolutely what we're all about: mm -hmm. is trying to work with the folk that come here and build relationships with them so we can help them identify what they need to have a better life, to have a healthier life, to have a happier life. And when we do that, we work with them to achieve those things so that they can achieve all that. They can be happier. They can be uh, healthier. They can be more productive. Yeah. You know, uh, just before the break, I was talking about uh, reports that have gone out. And I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but I know that studies have been done that have determined the cost of uh, um, a, a somebody living hard in the streets. Um, you know, you, you may think, well, they're not paying rent. They're not, you know, uh, um, living a life that most of us would be familiar with. But the thing is, there are added costs and strains out there in the community system, uh, you know, in, ho in hospitalization, in uh, policing, in uh, so many other things. It is actually cheaper uh, from a community standpoint to house somebody and to help them uh, get work and get a job. And I think really that's one of the things that all of these agencies like our place work together to try to achieve, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Stephen, uh, we talked about uh, fundraising uh, just before the break. And um, because of course, all these things require funding, right? Okay. I would really like to explain to our listeners something really neat that happened just a few weeks ago that you uh, are instrumental in, uh, you know, you've, I know how much work these things uh, take to get put together. You, you are the guy. You've done a number of these now. Let's tell people about uh, Hungry Hearts. 
Um, Hungry Hearts is our gala fundraiser that we hold every year. Uh, it's uh, important that we hold this because the money we raise from Hungry Hearts goes to our health and safety programs. So that's having paramedic outreach workers, that's having the medical supplies that we need, and that's extending the hours of our place so that we can provide programs and services, you know, long after nine to five. And, and this gives people shelter for, for extended hours into the evening. Um, with COVID, uh, there was a concern that we wouldn't be able to hold something like that. So, um, yeah, because typically uh, the event is in a hotel, there's hundreds of people there, um, and it's a fun gala event. It is. We bring in six, seven chefs and uh, they create dishes and people vote on their favorite dish and, and we, we crown a Hungry Hearts champion chef and it's a lot of fun. So that was supposed to happen in March. Um, we have to go on no matter what. So we came up with... The need creative... doesn't stop, basically. Absolutely not. Yeah. So we came up with uh, some creative ideas um, and, and realized that it shouldn't just be about us. Um, we created a two-part event, and the first part was to give back to local businesses in need. So we uh, had about 16 restaurants create a mac and cheese dish. And then we asked our community to go to those restaurants, uh, order the dish uh, and other food there, and then vote on their favorite. So this way we were able to give back. Um, to help set, those restaurants. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. We're all in this together. Um, yeah. if, if there's one message that, that gets out today, and, and that's it, you know, um, uh, between real estate, uh, community services, uh, everyone who's listening, we're, we're all in this together. Um, the second half, we, we put on a virtual event. We, we live streamed uh, some pretty fun and, and informative information. We had last year's Hungry Heart Chef do a cooking demo. We had um, a, a, a band play. We had uh, um, just some information that, that we provided in, in a pretty entertaining way, including Julian, who's still, you know, still only three months in, uh, did a Q&A to explain what we're doing today and what we'll be doing five years ago, uh, five years from now with our place. And um, I, I gotta say, the community responded. We, we raised, um, with, with your help, help Tony, because um, you, you helped us with uh, some live auction items, we, we raised $153,000, which is the wow. highest we, we've raised for a Hungry Hearts event. And that's wow. that showed us that what we're doing is, is being supported by our community. Amazing. You know, uh, other organizations or groups, you know, they, they struggle to raise $10,000, you know, even during normal time. Uh, to raise $153,000, just a reminder about the support that the community uh, uh, gives behind our place, knowing and understanding the, the, the importance of it. I should mention, too, be, uh, because, I, of course, I was there at the event. It was all very COVID. The pro COVID protocols were there. There was only 20 guests. Everyone was socially distant, masks, sanitizer, um, the gloves, all that kind of stuff. Um, the live stream was great uh, to have uh, the hosts, uh, Pete and Charlotte. Uh, they were having their little TV moment. Uh, actually, people can watch that on the Our Place Facebook page, right? That's right. It's, it's still up there for viewing. And uh, it, I, I think I watched it again a couple of days ago. Uh, and and it's, it still felt good. Yeah. Yeah, it's just 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 absolutely amazing. Um, in um, I I love the idea about supporting those local businesses and getting people out. Uh, again, what it was was an invitation for the community to go out and try the different uh, macs and cheeses, macaroni and cheese at all the different uh, restaurants, which people did. Uh, so so that was great. That's the community getting together, right? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're huge supporters of groups like the, the Chamber of Commerce and, and the Real Estate Board. And um, as much as we're concerned about COVID, we're also concerned about the health of our community. And um, we want to be part of any solutions. Yeah, so much work to be done, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, for, for our little town. You know, uh, the, the, the big question that comes, and hopefully we have enough time uh, to wrap this up here, between the two of you, Julian and Stephen, I mean, what, what needs to be done? The Victoria is so close to perfect, right? Um, what, what needs to be done uh, to get us there, uh, Julian? Like it, and this is something, Edmonton's done a lot of work in the homelessness uh, 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 realm uh, as well. And this is where you come from. So how close are we to getting this figured out? 
I think um, Edmonton still has its challenges. Um, in some ways, it's kind of it's complicated, but it's simple. It, it's the, the two biggest drivers of homelessness uh, are, are frankly the lack of affordable housing and the lack of access to to really good sustained mental health and addictions treatment. Uh, we have, uh, you know, the as your listeners know, real estate is very expensive here. We 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 have to commit uh, as a society and from our driven by our federal and provincial governments who are the providers of housing, not the municipality. We have to commit to providing affordable housing uh, in, in Victoria and Greater Victoria uh, and building it or having rent supplements so that people can actually afford rents in, in properties. You know, and that would help also a lot of your listeners who have, you know, businesses which are attached to rentals. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that would be a real win-win. Um, that's the, the, supplement, the supplement for people is the, yeah. the difference between um, uh, the their monthly checks yeah. and yeah, and the actual rent, which are, which are high. So if we if we did that, that would be a major step forward. And then you know, for those that are, are really failing to maintain their housing or can't get housing because of their mental health and addictions, we need to have proper treatment. At the moment, we have a crazy system where people go in for like 30 days, 60 days treatment if they can get in. And that just doesn't cut it. You know, for example, at our place, we have a program, the Therapeutic Recovery Community, which people can stay in for up to two years. When you have profound addictions, it takes time to, to really heal and to, to recover from them. And it can often be an ongoing uh, lifetime journey of recovery and abstinence. So, and people need support through that. If we, I think if we had those two things in place uh, in, in, in the, to the degree it's needed, we would, we would make serious inroads in homelessness. I think we could end homelessness, but until we do that, uh, we, we won't. And, you know, Stephen was talking about the amount of money we raised and I, I just, you know, wanted to acknowledge that because I'm sure some of your listeners were people who help, who do donate to our place. And I, you know, we're always there for all Victorians who are going through tough times, whether they're homeless or not. Uh, but also your listeners and people who donate to us are there for us during tough times. And I just wanted to thank them for that and acknowledge that because uh, the work does go on and we could not, we literally could not do it. I know people always say this, but we really couldn't do it without the generosity of so many thousands of people in this city who give uh, every year to our work uh, to help us help people through tough times. So I want to thank them for helping us through tough times too. Well, and you know what? What a great way to end the show because it's a reminder about one of the other things that Victoria is, and it's a generous community. Oh, amazingly and so. That's fantastic. Thank you for joining us, uh, Julian Daly, CEO, uh, and also Stephen Seltzer, both from our place today. And I do uh, implore any of the listeners here, if you haven't visited or donated to um, the society, please do so. Visit the website. Uh, look up our place. It's a great, uh, great place. Thank you for joining us, both of you. Thank you so much, Tony. Yeah, and, Thanks, to the, Tony. and to the rest of our listeners, we'll be here for you this time next week.